That is the board visible? Yes, sir. Chalo, shuru kare. Huh? Right, let us begin, guys. So we are going to discuss questions of magnetism and matter. Yesterday we have seen some concepts of magnetism and matter. Maybe all were not covered in that, guys. And uh, I was also not feeling well, so I think I have, I have just given a review. I don't know whether it was a good review, bad review, whatever it was. I have given a review yesterday. So let us discuss uh, magnetism and matter through chapter through the problems again, guys. Current one ampere produces a deflection 60 degrees in tangent galvanometer. The uh, current that produces a deflection of 30 degrees in the same galvanometer is how much they are asking. So basically, we have some law called as tangent law, wherein which we understand or observe the uh, motion of a bar magnet in crossed fields. Guys, one will be the applied field, other will be the horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field. So in there, uh, we are going to get that. So in this situation, you are going to get um, the applied magnetic field. You will get it as BH tan theta. This is our behavior of bar magnet in perpendicular fields, guys, or crossed fields we study basically. So we get this relation. This relation is called as tangent law. So if you take tangent galvanometer, the magnetic field at the center, you will get it as mu naught i divided by 2r. Right? If you have n turns, you will write it as n into mu naught i divided by 2r will be bh into tan theta. So I can write i value as 2r bh divided by n into mu naught okay tan theta so at a given place this value will be constant guys this value will be called as k again so i will be given as k tan theta this was not there anyhow but basically remember in tangent galvanometer i will be proportional to tan theta beta this is the concept that you need to remember again so what we can write i1 divided by i2 same galvanometer they have said so you are going to have same value of k again k is also called as reduction factor guys i1 by i2 will be tan theta 1 divided by tan theta 2. They are asking us to calculate i2 value, which is i1 into tan theta 2 divided by tan theta 1. How much is i1? It is given as 1 ampere. Tan theta 2 is tan 30 divided by tan 60. Tan 30, you all know it is 1 by root 3 whole divided by root 3. So you are going to get i2 value as 1 by 3 ampere. Is that clear, all of you? So this is tangent law. B is equal to BH tan theta is tangent law again. Okay. And from this, we can find out that the current produced will be proportional to the tangent of the deflection. Clear? Yes, no? Yes. So the following is true, it seems. Diamagnetism is temperature dependent. Is that correct? Diamagnetism is a temperature de dependent. Susceptibility of diamagnetic materials doesn't depend on temperature. Yes or no, guys? So this is temperature independent again. Paramagnetism is temperature dependent. Yes, it is inversely proportional to the temperature. The second one will be correct statement. Clear all of you? Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Right, next case, let us see. A magnetic a magnet of magnetic moment four joule per Tesla is aligned in the direction of magnetic field. The net work done to slowly rotate the bar magnet by 180 degrees. So it is magnetic dipole moment is in the direction of magnetic field. So here, what is the value of initial angle between M bar and B bar? Zero. Now I am rotating it slowly by 180. So what will be the angle? Theta final will be equal to 180 degrees. Yesterday I have given you work done in rotating a bar magnet from some initial position theta 1 or 2 theta 2 what will that work done be you will write it as mb into cos theta initial minus cos theta final what is the m value given here it is 4 this is 0 0.2 what is cos theta initial cos 0 minus cos 180 cos 0 is 1 cos 180 is minus 1 so minus of minus will become plus 2 into 4 is 8. 8 into 0 0.2 will be 1.6. So this will be equal to how much better? 1.6 joules. Clear? Is that clear? Work done in rotating a bar magnet from some theta initial to theta final will be mb cos theta initial minus cos theta final. 
It is nothing but change in potential energy, guys. Clear? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, sir. This question you see. A vertical needle dips initially in the magnetic meridian. When it shows an angle of dip theta at a place, the dip circle is rotated through an angle 60 degrees. It shows an angle of dip theta dash. Then what is tan theta dash they are saying? So basically, what we are doing is right, we have studied something yesterday, but I'm just trying to give some additional things related to that. The geographic meridian and magnetic meridian, will they be inclined to each other by a certain angle? Yes or no, yeah. Yes, sir. So let us imagine this is the magnetic meridian. The needle of the vertical compass <laughs> when placed in magnetic meridian, will it point towards Earth's magnetic field or not? The angle it is making with the horizontal will be your angle of dip, which is called as true dip. Here it is given as theta. Is that clear? Now this is our magnetic meridian. Which meridian is it? This is our magnetic meridian. Now what we are doing is this magnetic meridian is being rotated. Let us. How are we rotating? We are rotating it in clockwise sense. So when you rotate it in clockwise sense, are we going to get one more plane, something like this, or not? Yes or no, everyone? Right. So this is our which meridian? This is our magnetic meridian. Is there any angle between magnetic meridian and geographic meridian? Yes. What is that angle called as? Angle of declination. This is some plane. It is a plane surface. It is not geographic meridian, guys. Now, by how much angle did we rotate it? We have rotated it by 60 degrees. <coughs> the dip circle is rotated through an angle 60 degrees. Then it shows an angle of dip theta dash, it seems. Now, you please try to understand. Can I resolve into components or not? If I resolve into components, this Earth's magnetic field, what will I get this as? I'll get this as horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field. I'll get this as vertical component of Earth's magnetic field. Right? This is, let us say, plane 1. You will all, you can also take one more plane, which is perpendicular to the first plane, guys. Right? I can take one more plane, which is perpendicular to the first plane. You can consider this to be plane 2. Okay? Listen very carefully. Now, you see, the vertical component is common for all the planes. Whether you take first plane, whether you take second plane, whether you take magnetic meridian, the vertical component is common. But what will be different? Suppose if you resolve this horizontal component into two components, guys, what are we going to get? Will I get this as PH cos 60? Yes or no? In the same manner, I am going to get this as BH sin 60. Am I right? <laughs> is that clear? Did you understand? I have taken two mutually perpendicular planes, guys. How did I take the planes? I have taken two mutually perpendicular planes as well as magnetic meridian. So if I take the first plane, if I take the first plane, what components does this plane include? This plane will have vertical component BV. And what is the horizontal component, beta? It is going to have a horizontal component BH cos 60. Yes or no? And what would be magnetic field in this particular plane? The magnetic field will be this. And magnetic field will be measured by dip circle. So how much angle it is saying the dip circle is rotated through an angle 60 degrees. Then it shows an angle of dip theta dash. So the angle made by the magnetic field in the first plane with the horizontal will be theta dash. Is that clear all of you? Did you understand this? In the same manner, you can take second plane also. Let me take second plane, something in this manner. Which component is same? Always vertical component is same. Now, what is the horizontal component in this plane? You are going to have this as BH sin 60 beta. Now, the resultant of these two, if I take, you are going to get something in this manner or not? Let us say this is B dash. This will be B double dash. So, angle made by the B double dash with horizontal. This will be your 
angle of dip in second plane so whenever we take angle of dip in magnetic meridian that is called as true dip angle of dip in mutually perpendicular planes will be called as apparent dips so here i can apply tan theta dash or not what will you get tan theta dash as i'll get it as pv divided by bh cos 60 how can we write bv value you know it can be written as bh cos bh tan phi remember it or not guys phi is the angle of true dip again what we can write it as this i can write it as tan theta divided by cos 60 it will be equal to tan theta dash so they are asking tan theta dash divided by tan theta which is 1 by cos 60 cos 60 anyhow is 1 by 2 so one whole divided by 2 you will get it as 2 guys clear Whereas here, if I want to find, what will I apply? Tan theta double dash will be equal to BV divided by BH sine 60. Now, we have yes, we have seen this yesterday. The ratio of vertical to horizontal component will be tan of true dip, guys. So again, I'll write it as tan theta divided by sine 60. So if I find tan t theta double dash divided by tan theta, you will get it as 1 by sin 60, which turns out to be 2 by root 3. Clear, everyone? Understood? What are theta dash and theta double dash? These are angle of dips in mutually perpendicular planes. These are also called as apparent dips. What is theta? It is angle of dip in magnetic meridian. It is also called as true dip. What is the relation between apparent dips and true dips? Cot square phi 1 plus cot square phi 2 is equal to cot square phi. Remember, everyone? Yes or no? Let's talk about the next question. A magnetic moment of steel wire is M. It is bent into a circular arc, which is making an angle 60 degrees at its center. The new magnetic moment of the circular arc will be how much? So you can assume, how is that arc bent? It is bent something like this, guys. Again, these are important questions, beta. These are important questions. The arc is bent something like this. <laughs> How much angle is it subtending at center? Is it subtending an angle 60 degrees or not? Yes, it is subtending an angle 60 degrees. Let us imagine this is south pole. This is north pole. Already magnetic moment of a steel wire, wire is given. Now, initially it was straight. Now it has been bent, guys. Right? Pole strength will it change? No, pole strength will depend on area of cross section. As you bend, area of cross section will not change. Now, what will happen to the effective length? Always remember, directed from south to north, we are going to have what beta? A quantity called as magnetic dipole moment. Directed from where to where? South to north. Now please see from here to here, what is it? R. From here to here, what is it? R. Now, if this is 60, already these two are radius. So will these two also be 60 degrees or not? So automatically, what will be the effective length between the poles? Again, it will be equal to R only. Now what we can say, this length, guys. Let us imagine this length is equal to L. What we can write it as L value will be, you know, length of the arc is given as R theta. So I can write it as R into, what is this angle in radian? You can write it as pi by 3. So what will R value become, beta? will be 3L divided by pi. Now what is the new magnetic moment? M dash will be. Is area of cross section changing? No. So pole strength will not change. But what is changing? The length between the poles is changing. Initially it was L. Now it became R. So what we can write it as? M into 3L divided by pi. So I can also write it as 3 by pi M into L. Initially pole strength was M. Distance between the poles was L. So what we can write it as beta? 3m divided by pi will be the new magnetic moment. Clear? Understood? <laughs> Hello? Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you.
I think the mucus that suppose is that is supposed to come out of the nose has got stuck here. Okay, so it is not letting the mucus come out, nor it is letting my voice come out. Let us see the next question. I hope you understood the question, guys. Everyone. Yes, sir. A paramagnetic liquid is filled in glass glass U tube of which one limb is placed between the pole pieces of an electromagnet. When the field is switched on, the liquid in the limb, which is in the field, will be what will happen? Paramagnetic substances, guys, are they going to move towards stronger field region or not? Yes or no? The paramagnetic liquid is filled in a glass U tube. So we have seen it yesterday, I guess. If you just go back. See, guys, as you can see in the last session, what are happening? They are attracted by the magnetic field. So they move towards stronger region of magnetic field. In one limb, they will move up. In the other limb, they will come down, guys. Okay. However, what is the question? Let us see once again. So what they are saying is a paramagnetic liquid is filled in a glass U tube of which one limb is placed between the pole pieces of an electromagnet. One limb is placed. Only one limb. Okay. This question I have not discussed. I will discuss it, guys. You can take a U tube, something like this. You have paramagnetic liquid field. Right. So here you have some electromagnet, only one limb. This is your north, this is your south. So more elect more magnetic field will be here or not, guys? So initially, if bar magnet was not there, the level will be same. But now what is going to happen? In one limb you have placed, right? When the field is switched on in the limb, on the liquid in the limb, which is in the field will be. What will happen to the liquid in the limb? What will happen? Will it move towards stronger field region or not? Yes or no, everyone? So it is going to rise. Clear? Yes. Paramagnetic. In the same manner. Let us go back to the previous question. A domain in a ferromagnetic substance is in the form of a cube of side length 1 micrometer. If it contains 4 into 10 power 8 atoms, each atomic dipole has a dipole moment 3 into 10 power minus 24. Then the magnetization of the domain is how much they are asking. What is the situation here? What is the meaning of ampere meter square, guys? Ampere meter square. Is it magnet dipole moment or not? They are asking us to find magnetization of the domain. Hence, they are asking us to find intensity of magnetization, guys. So a domain in a ferromagnetic substance is in the form of a cube. Side length is given 1 micrometer. If it contains 4 into 10 power 10, so first, what will be total magnetic dipole moment? For each atom, how much is it? 3 into 10 power minus 24. Like that, how many atoms we have? 4 into 10 power 10. So what is the total magnetic moment? 12 into 10 power minus 14 ampere meter square. Yes or no? They are asking magnetization of the domain. What is magnetization here? Magnetization, which is intensity of magnetization. It is given as magnetic moment developed per unit volume, guys. What is the magnetic moment developed? Total magnetic moment? 12 into 10 power minus 4. What is the volume? How much is it given? 1 micrometer, no? If you just do uh, 10 power minus 14, right? So 1 micrometer, 10 power minus 6 is given. Yes or no? What is volume of cube? 10 power minus 6 whole cube. Will it be 10 power 18 or not? So 12 into 10 power minus 14 divided by 10 power minus 18. If you send it in the numerator, what will I get the magnetization as beta? I am going to get the magnetization as 12 into 10 power 14. Sorry, 12 into 10 power 4, which can be written as 1.2 into 10 power 5 ampere per meter clear understood everyone yes everyone clear what is the meaning of magnetization it is i 
I is nothing but magnetic moment developed per unit volume. समझ गए? Yes or no? Yes sir. Right. If the current is halved, then the deflection is not halved in. Current is halved. Deflection is not halved in what they are saying. Right? It will not be halved in what guys? In moving coil galvanometer, if I say. We study. We have studied that in uh, moving charges and magnetic effects of current. Moving coil galvanometer will work on torque experienced by bar magnet. So what do we write it as, beta? Torque will be N I A B sine theta. Yes or no? For small angles, you can write, or you can just take it as maximum torque. If I take N I A B, you will get which will be equal to C into theta. So theta by I, which is current sensitivity. Will be given as N A B divided by C. If current is halved, deflection is not halved in. So you try to understand deflection in moving coil galvanometer is N A B by C into I. So deflection in moving coil galvanometer is directly proportional to I. Yes or no? So what is the situation here? If current is halved, whereas moving galvanometer is used to measure small currents, guys. So if current is half, I can say deflection is also half. Whereas in case of tangent galvanometer, just now I have told you tangent galvanometer, I is proportional to what? Tan theta again. So if current is half, theta will be tan inverse of one by two, which is not going to be half again. Okay. So what they are saying, if the current is half, then the deflection is not half in. Basically, it will not get half in tangent galvanometer case. Clear? Although I'll just cross check this question once again. Understood, everyone. Yes. Next, small bar magnet of magnetic moment 1.44 ampere per meter square is placed horizontally with the north pole pointing towards magnetic north. In the position of neutral point, if the horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field is 18 micro tesla, they are saying, guys. Okay. Small wire magnet of magnetic moment is placed horizontally with the north pole pointing towards magnetic north, guys. Okay. So although it is placed horizontally, I'll just show it something like this. Okay, if you want, you can take it something like this. So I'll show it vertically, guys. It, it is happening horizontally. The magnetic north is placed here. North pole is placed near magnetic north. And always remember, let us say this is our magnetic north. This will be your magnetic south. The horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field will always be directed from magnetic south to magnetic north. Okay. So will this be the axis of the bar magnet? Yes, this will be the axis of the bar magnet. And we know there will be a quantity directed from south to north, which is called as magnet dipole moment. See, you take two points now. Which points better? Let us say you are going to obtain infinite neutral points here. Let us take points on axial. Is this axis of the bar magnet or not? Yes. So if I take the point here or here, what are we going to obtain? And you'll also take one more axis called as equatorial axis. Right. Now you see. At this point, what will magnetic field be? At this point, will magnetic field be? At axial point, will magnetic field be in the direction of magnet dipole moment? Yes. Here also you see, it will be in this direction. Can this magnetic field and horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field, can they cancel out? No, because they are in same direction. This magnetic field and horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field, will it cancel out? No. So you take any point on the axial line, you cannot have a neutral point. Why? Because the magnetic field obtained and the horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field will be in same direction. So they are not going to cancel out each other. Clear? So obviously, our point will be somewhere over here. Now, this is our equatorial point. Let us say it is at a certain distance r. So how will magnetic field be at equatorial point? Anti-parallel to m bar. So will I get something like this or not? So there is a possibility here. What we can write, B value should be equal to BH. 
what is b value beta at equal to real point u naught by 4 pi if i take short bar magnet you will get it as m by r cube because it's mentioned as small bar magnet guys will be equal to bh they're asking r cube value what will it be mu naught by 4 pi m by bh is my voice audible to you all guys what is mu naught by 4 pi it is 10 power minus 7 what is magnetic dipole moment given 1.44 what is bh value given 18 micro tesla is given 18 into 10 power what we can write minus 6 you can write is that clear all of you clear everyone yes so what will i get r cube value as 10 power minus 1 you will get i can take it as 0 0.144 divided by 18 yes or no or i can write it as 144 into 1000 by 1000 i'm doing 18 into 1000 you will get how much is this 140 18 ones 18 eights guys so what will our r cube value here r cube value we got it as 8 divided by 1000 r value will be 2 divided by 10 which is 0.2 meters into 100 if i do you will get it as 20 centimeters clear everyone so whenever north is pointing towards north how many neutral points will obtain will obtain infinite neutral points guys and all those neutral points are going to lie on some circle guys that circle is called as equatorial circle when north is placed towards north when south is placed towards north you are going to obtain two neutral points here one here one on the axial on the axis of the bar magnet clear please remember north place near north infinite neutral points will be obtained in equatorial plane they will all lie on a circle that circle will be called as equatorial circle whereas if south is pointing towards the no north if south is pointing towards north we will get two neutral points one will be here other one will be here on the axis of the bar magnet clear everyone yes or no the permanent magnetic moment of the material is zero right so definitely it has to be diamagnetic guys para permanent magnetic moment of the atom of a material is zero that will be for diamagnetic material clear next a solenoid has core of material with relative permeability 400 the winding of the solenoid are insulated from the core and carry a current 4 ampere if the number of turns is 2000 per meter is number of turns per unit length guys the value of magnetic field inside the solenoid is nearly again what is magnetic field inside solenoid is it given as mu naught ni but in other medium what will it be given as mu naught mu r n i mu naught value is 4.2 10 power minus 7 mu r value is given as 400 what is number of turns per unit length 2000 what is current 4 ampere so what will i get here guys so you will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 10 power minus 2, you will get 4, 4, 16. 32 fours. How much will it be? 128. 128 pi into 10 power minus 2, you will get, guys. So what is uh, 128 into 3? Almost 130 into 3, you will get 390. 400, you will get, guys. It's approximately 400 into 10 power minus 2 which will be approximately equal to 4 tesla clear everyone this is the magnetic field inside anywhere of the solenoid if it is long right that too if the space inside the solenoid is filled with vacuum if it is filled with some other medium you will write mu naught into mu r understood all of you yes or no yes Paramagnetic sample shows net magnetization of 4 ampere per meter. So I value is given here, guys. When placed in an external magnetic field of 0.3 Tesla at a temperature 4 Kelvin, 
when the same sample is placed in an external magnetic field of 0.1 tesla at a temperature of 12k the magnetization will be how much so we know what is the concept will involve here susceptibility for paramagnetic will be inversely proportional to temperature right so what we can write implies i by h will be inversely proportional to temperature so what we can write beta i1 by i2 into h2 by h1 will be equal to t2 divided by t1 h2 and h1 how can they be written as b0 by mu0 you can write so implies what will i get here i1 by i2 into b0 2 divided by b0 1 will be equal to t2 by t1 they are asking us to find i2 value guys which you will get it as they are asking i2 value which i will get it as i1 into b0 2 divided by b0 1 into t2 divided by t1 what is i1 given 4 what is b0 2 0.1 what is b0 1 0.3 t2 is 12 this is 4 what will i get 4 ones 4 threes similarly 3 ones 3.1 so you will get 0 0.1 0 0.1 will get cancelled out so what will our i2 value be beta if you do any mistake just check Paramagnetic sample shows net magnetization of 4 ampere per meter when placed in external magnetic field of 0.3 tesla at temperature of 4 kelvin. When the same sample is placed in an external magnetic field of 0.1 tesla at temperature of 12, this is T1 by T2, no? If I am sending on the other side, you will get T1 by T2, no? So, in this case, Indra, why me? What is T1 value? 4. What is T2 value? 12. What will I get? So you cannot cancel out these guys. You can take 4 uh, ones, 4 threes you can write. And 0 0.1 anyhow, 0 0.1 ones, 0 0.1 threes you can write. So 4 by 9 ampere per meter will be the answer. Clear all of you? I hope the option is there. Understood? Susceptibility for paramagnetic materials inversely proportional to temperature. Clear? A long solenoid has 500 turns per meter, carries a current 2 ampere. It has a soft iron core of relative permeability 1000. The core is heated beyond Curie temperature. So, what will happen, beta? Above Curie temperature, ferromagnetic materials will become? Will they become paramagnetic or not? Yes. So, what they have given? The H and B fields in the solenoid are nearly unchanged. The H field in the solenoid is unchanged, but the B field decreases drastically. H and B field decreased drastically. H field in the solenoid decreases drastically, but B field is nearly unchanged. So what will remain unchanged? H is again your uh, which value? Magnetic intensity. B is the applied magnetic field, guys. The long solenoid, you can find out the magnetic field here, which is mu naught, mu r, n into i what is mu naught value again 4.2 10 power minus 7 mu r value is given as 1000 here you have 500 this is 2 10 power 6 you will get here 10 power 4 pi into 10 power minus 1 you will get tesla which is 0.4 pi tesla this is our magnetic field but what will happen as you increase beyond Curie temperature, ferromagnetic will become paramagnetic or not. So basically above Curie temperature, so I by H susceptibility you know for ferromagnetic, how is it changing? Susceptibility for ferromagnet. I have given you this graph yesterday guys. So initially, it will decrease like this. Till which temperature? Till Curie point. 
Now after that above Curie point, it drastically decrease or not? So what is changing here? I by H value is decreasing. Yes or no? This temperature will be your Curie point temperature. So I by H value is decreasing more. I by H is decreasing means should H value increase or not again? If that is the case. But H will again be in the direction of magnetic field. The core is heated beyond the Curie temperature, so it will become paramagnetic, guys. Susceptibility will be changing. The H field in the solenoid is unchanged, but the B field decreases drastically. So in case of uh, relative permeability, also if I observe, uh, for paramagnet is less than for for paramagnet is more than one. But for ferromagnet is much more greater than one. Yes or no? So there will be a drastic change again. So what is uh, permeability given as? Permeability, if I consider, is given as B by H or not? So what is happening to permeability value, beta? This is decreasing more because for ferromagnetic, relative permeability is very much greater than one. Relative permeability is nothing but mu by mu naught. Mu naught value is not going to change, right? So as mu value decreases, so B should also decrease again. So B in the field will decrease more. So when applied magnetic field is changing, H value will also change. But if H value is changing, I cannot say mu value will be changing much. Yes or no? So keep this question aside. Although what I'll say is because relative permeability will get decreased more. It means mu mu value should decrease more. When will it decrease more? If B value is decreasing more. So I will go with an option that H field in the solenoid, sorry, H field will remain unchanged, but the B field will decrease drastically. I'll go with that. But let me also cross check this question, guys. Clear, everyone? Primary uh, origin of magnetism is not required again. I think it should be atomic current and intrinsic spin of electron. Let me cross check this question also. Small magnetic needle P placed at a point O. The arrow shows the direction of its magnetic moment. Okay, the other arrows show different positions and orientations of the magnetic moment of another identical magnetic needle. As shown in the figure, in which configuration systems are in unstable equilibrium, they are saying. Right? So, this you can consider as a, a small magnetized needle. To this, you can take it as a small bar magnet. Guys. They are saying, as shown in the figure, in which configuration system is in unstable equilibrium. So, when will system be in un unstable equilibrium? Angle should be how much better? 180. 180 degrees or not. So what I can say because of this, what would be or if I want to find the other arrows show different positions and orientations of magnetic moment of another identical magnetized. This is the system. P is the system, let us say. So due to Q4, right? I'll just take P point here. For P1, for Q1 for Q1 in this point for Q1, Q2, which point is this? So I'll directly tell it, guys. If I take Q1 and Q2, what is the point P? Is it an axial point or not? So, how will the magnetic field be? It will be something in this manner. But the magnetic dipole moment, if you see, it is upwards. So here angle is 90 degrees. It will be neutral equilibrium. So Q1 and Q2 are wrong, guys, directly. Yes or no? Yes. In the same manner, you have been given Q5. And you have been given Q3, something like this. Q3, this is Q5. Now, for Q3 and Q5, what is point P? For Q3 and Q5, point P, is it equatorial point or not? Yes. So for Q5, how will the magnetic field be? For Q5, it will be in this manner. 
for q3 it will be like this so can i say p q phi one of the option because p bar is upwards magnetic field due to q phi will be downwards so angle between them will be 180 so i can say p q phi is one of the option is that clear did you understand or not i am removing this part guys next so i have q4 like this right this is q4 and you have q6 like this please tell me for given q4 and q6 which point is point p again is it axial point or not beta yes so how will the magnetic field be because of q6 it will be upwards only but i want magnetic field in which direction downward direction right so it will be because of q4 so what will the answers be beta p q5 and p q4 should be the answer clear for unstable equilibrium should be angle between m bar and b bar 180 degrees it is possible only in p q4 and p q5 case understood there is but yahan pe to angle zero hai na sir kahan pe angle are bhai mere p bar aisa hai p bar is upwards okay so what yes. is it clear yes let, let us try to see next question a closely wound solenoid of 1000 turns area is given carrying some current is given what is torque on the solenoid they are asking basically what is torque experienced by bar magnet guys m bar cross b bar so torque i can write it as m into b sin theta yes or no now they have given as number of turns total number of turns has been given uh, cross section area is given carrying current is given if a uniform horizontal magnetic field is set up on the angle of so what is the basic logic it is set up at an angle 30 degrees with the axis of solenoid so how will area vector be it will be along the axis guys so what is the angle here here the angle between area vector and magnetic field is 30 degrees so what we can write this as we know m value is given as n i a b sin theta number of turns 1000 What is I? Two. What is area, beta? Eight into ten power minus three. What is magnetic field? Five into ten power minus two. What is sine thirty? One by two. So what we can cancel out? Two, two cancelled. Ten power minus three thousand cancelled. Eight five is forty. Forty into ten power minus two will be point four guys. Clear everyone? Area vector will always be along the axis. so area vector in the direction of area vector only we have magnet dipole moment magnetic field is making an angle 30 degrees with the axis so along the axis we will have area vector as well as magnet dipole moment magnetic field is making an angle 30 degrees so angle between m bar and b bar will be 30 degrees here clear yes or no yes earth's magnetic field always has a horizontal component except at at which point they are saying you are not going to have a horizontal component of uh, the magnetic field so basically we know horizontal component is given as what beta right if you see is it given as b cos phi or not yes or no so wherever i want for bh to be zero for bh to be zero so all obviously magnet as magnetic field is not zero again what we can write cos phi should be zero so what will phi value be 90 degrees beta so where is phi value 90 degrees angle of dp is 90 degrees at poles at north pole it is plus 90 at south pole it is minus 90 clear so where will you not have any horizontal component at magnetic poles guys understood everyone <laughs> that clear 
Sono. My audible. Yes. Magnetic field due to a short bar magnet. Uh, short bar magnet of magnet dipole momentum and length twelve. At a point P, which is the distance R from the center of the bar. Is it a radial point or not? So, what is magnetic field at radial point in magnitude beta? U naught by four pi <coughs> m by R cube <coughs> under root of one plus three cos square theta. Yes or no? So what I'll get mu naught by four pi m by r cube under root of one plus three into cos thirty whole square or not beta cos square thirty. What is cos thirty? Cos thirty is how much? Root three by two. So what will be cos square thirty? Will it be three by four or not? Yes. So you'll get root thirteen by eight. You will get guys. So you'll get it as root thirteen divided by eight pi u naught m by r cube. Understood, everyone? One plus nine by four, thirteen by four. You'll get root thirteen by two. You'll get two into four will be eight again. Understood? Next, when two ampere current is passed through a tangent galvanometer, it gives a deflection sixty degrees. For 45 degrees deflection, current must be again direct concept or not? What should the current be in case of tangent galvanometer? Current should be proportional to tan theta. So I can write I1 by I2 value as I can write I1 by I2 value as tan theta one divided by tan theta two. So what will I2 value be? I1 into tan theta two divided by tan Sir? theta one. What happened? Hey, my dear, hey. So what are we going to get from this? I one value is two ampere, right? Tan theta two is forty five divided by what are we going to get? Tan sixty. This will be two divided by root three ampere. Understood, everyone? Yes or no? Yes. Next, area of the hysteresis loop of a material is equal to 200 joules. When 5 kg material is magnetized by an alternating field of 50 hertz, the energy lost in one hour is how much they are asking. So area of hysteresis loop is given as what beta? B versus H graph basically is taken as area of hysteresis loop again. Five kg material is magnetized by an alternating field of 50 hertz. Asking energy lost in one hour will be how much they are asking. So what we can write? How shall we solve this question? Energy loss they are asking in this question. Let us come back to that question in some time. Magnet is suspended horizontally in Earth's magnetic field. Right when it is displaced and then re released, it oscillates in horizontal plane with some period. It seems if a piece of wood of the double moment of inertia as the uh, about the axis of rotation, as the magnet is attached to the magnet, what would be the new period of oscillations of the magnet? They are saying. What is the situation here? You know, time period of a bar magnet is given as two pi root over i divided by m b. Yes or no, all of all of you. So what they are saying, if a piece of wood of the double moment of inertia, as the magnet is attached to the bar magnet, so here only wood cannot have magnet double moment. Wood is not a magnetic material, guys. So what will happen to the new time period? It will become two pi into root over i dash divided by m b. M is not going to change. B is not going to change. What is changing? I is changing. So what we can write? T by T dash will be equal to root I divided by root I dash. So what is T dash? T into root I dash divided by root I. So what is 
total moment of inertia in second case you will have moment of inertia of the magnet you will also have moment of inertia of the wood the moment of inertia of the wood is given as clearly double moment of inertia as the magnet yes or no so for magnet it is m for magnet it is i so wood will have 2i overall what will be the so you are going to get it as root over 3i divided by root over i so root 3t should be your clear all of you why is magnetic moment not changing because wood is a non magnetic material guys understood yes or no is that clear it's susceptibility of a substance at room temperature is minus 0.002 susceptibility is negative which material it is which material yeah. is it diamagnetic or not so if its temperature is increasing will susceptibility change no what will it be it will still be minus 0.002 only clear everyone yes. next a dip circle is oriented with its plane at an angle 30 degrees with the magnetic meridian so what is the angle between magnetic meridian and the plane 30 degrees the apparent angle of dip shown by the dip circle is 45 so what we can write just now i have discussed this guys so tan theta dash if i say or let us say tan phi 1 what we can write it as beta you can write it as bh cos theta divided by bv sorry write it as bv divided by bh cos theta why again i'll draw the diagram for you people you have magnetic meridian something like this in which magnetic north south east west will lie and it is turned by 30 degrees they are saying now it is turned by how much degrees beta 30 degrees so what is this angle 30 degrees we already know here you are going to have bh yes or no in this you are going to have bv so in the first plane if i resolve this will i get bv cos 30 or not but sorry bh cos 30 or not so in this plane vertical component is bv horizontal component is bh cos 30 so resultant magnetic field let us take something like this so did you understand this everyone what is bv by bh it is true dip or not again so tan phi 1 value will be tan phi divided by cos theta total tan phi value be beta tan phi 1 into cos theta what is phi 1 given as apparent dip in the first plane it is given as 45 theta is given as 30 tan 45 is 1 cos 30 is root 3 by 2 So what will I get the actual dip as tan inverse of root three over two? Clear, everyone. Good question again. Do you understand it? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Let me see. What they have given next question? A magnet of magnetic moment m is oscillating freely in Earth's horizontal magnetic field makes. in oscillations per minute so here frequency is given or not first frequency is given as n so what will time period be 1 by n if the magnetic moment is doubled and earth's frequency only they are ta talking about guys so what is frequency i think you all are aware it is reciprocal of time period i can write 1 by 2 pi root over mb divided by i yes or no what they are saying if the magnetic moment is doubled and earth's horizontal field is also doubled the number of oscillations made per minute so we know frequency is proportional to what what is frequency proportional to now if i is not changing it is proportional to root over m into v beta so f1 divided by f2 will be equal to root over m1 b1 divided by root over m2 b2 So they are asking us to find out f2 value what are we going to get from that f2 value i can say it is f1 into 
रूट ओवर एम टू बाय एम वन पी टू बाय बी वन वॉट इज एम टू गिवेन वॉट इज एम टू गिवेन टू टाइम्स ऑफ एम वन वॉट इज बी टू गिवेन टू टाइम्स ऑफ बी वन वॉट वी कैन कैंसल आउट एम वन एम वन बी वन बी वन विल गेट कैंसल आउट वॉट इज रूट फोर बेटा कैन कैंसल आउट बी वन अरे कैंसल आउट बी वन बी वन ऑल्सो तो वॉट विल अवर एफ टू वैल्यू भी बी टू टाइम्स ऑफ एफ वन इट विल बी टू एन ऑसिलेशन सेकेंड क्लियर सेट क्लियर टाइम पीरियड ऑफ ऑसिलेशन इज टू पाई रूट ओवर आई बाई एम बी तो फ्रीक्वेंसी विल बी वन बाई टू पाई रूट ओवर एम बी बाई आई गाइज इट विल बिकम टू एन अंडरस्टूड एवरी वन मैग्नेटिक नीडल ऑफ मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट एम इज गिवेन मैक्सिमम टॉर्क एक्सपीरियंस बाय द नीडल व्हाट इज द मैक्सिमम टॉर्क दिस आल्सो हैव टोल्ड यू द फार्मूला अगेन मैक्सिमम टॉर्क विल बी एम इनटू बी बेटा तो 0.2 इनटू 4 व्हिच विल बी 0.8 न्यूटन मीटर डायरेक्टली जनरली व्हाट इज टॉर्क एम बी sin थीटा दिस आई हैव टोल्ड यू यस्टरडे आई हैव रिटन इट अगेन व्हाट शुड आवर आंसर बी 0.8 न्यूटन मीटर शुड बी द आंसर इफ एल इज द ज्योमेट्रिक लेंथ देन What is the separation between the two poles, guys? How much will it be? Point eight four times or not? So when will I get point eight four times, guys? I think six by seven will be point eight four. Yes or no? Seven eight is a fifty six. You will get again. Yes or no, yar? Yes. Then, in bar magnet of length two L and magnetic moment M is bent at the midpoint. So that the angle between the two halves is 60 degrees. The new magnetic moment they are saying. Very good question, guys. Again, you take a bar magnet. Where is it bent? It is bent at midpoint. So if I take this is south, this will be north. How is it bent, beta? Exactly at midpoint it is bent. And how is it bent? Something in this manner. So will south value change? No. Right? Will north value change? No. So how are they bent? It's bent in such a way that the angle between them, between the limbs, is how much better? Sixty degrees. You can see this will remain south only. This will become north only. But now I am going to get two bar magnets better. So this will become north. This will become south. both of them are inclined to each other by how much 60 degrees so again always directed from south to north if you are going to have magnetic dipole moment or not so you can take this is your m1 and you can take this is your m2 clear all of you the magnetic dipole moment now you please see we have two vectors here beta and how are they meeting this is your m1 bar and this is your m2 bar Yes or no? Now this angle is given as sixty degrees, but will this be the angle between the magnetic dipole moments? No. Always remember, when head of one vector is meeting tail of another vector, external angle should be considered as the angle between them. So here, what is the angle between them, beta? One twenty degrees. If two heads are meeting, two tails are meeting, internal angle. If head is meeting tail, external angle. Now you have two magnetic dipole moments. So what will be resultant magnetic dipole moment, beta? Under root of m1 square plus m2 square plus 2 m1 m2 cos theta. We can write. So what will m1 be? You see, initially this is our m magnetic dipole moment. So is pole strength changing? If you bend it, will area of cross section change? No. So will pole strength change? No. But what is happening? Length is changing. So if length is becoming half, again we have studied about this. Magnetic dipole moment will be given as pole strength times of magnetic length. If length is half, will magnetic dipole also be half or not? Yes. So what we can write? M1 value as m by 2 whole square plus m by 2 whole square plus 2 into m by 2 into m by 2 into You'll get cos 120. Cos 120 is 
cos 120 can be written as minus sin 30 beta so what are we going to get here plus 2 cos 120 will be cancelled out minus m by 2 whole square you will get so you can also consider m by 2 whole square plus m by 2 whole square will be getting cancelled out so resultant dipole moment you will get it as m by 2 clear everyone understood all of you cos 120 is minus 1 by 2 so 2 and 2 will get cancelled minus will be left m by 2 into m by 2 is m by 2 whole square one is minus m by 2 square other is plus m by 2 square these two will get cancelled out so will be left out with only one m by 2 whole square clear all of you yes what is the ultimate individual unit of magnetism again test charge test mass and test pole test pole is nothing but your unit north pole beta clear a bar magnet angle between the magnetic axis and magnetic moment is how much what is the angle between magnetic moment and magnetic axis 0 degrees a cylindrical bar magnet is cut parallel to magnetic axis such that it divide into two equal parts so what do you have you have a bar magnet i have told you yesterday guys what is going to happen again it is cut such that it is divide into two equal parts only it seems sorry i thought it is divide into four equal parts okay now what is going to happen in this case whenever you are dividing it slicing it parallelly or horizontally will time period change beta yes. no time period will still remain the same so it will remain same only so what they are asking a cylindrical bar magnet is cut parallel to magnetic axis is divided into two equal parts magnetic pole strength they are asking magnetic pole strength what will happen it's half by because area is getting half the magnetic pole strength of a single bar magnet will become half guys is that clear time period will not change again okay magnetic field due to a small bar magnet in equatorial position is b the magnitude of magnetic field at same distance at axial position again i have told you magnetic field at axial position is two times the magnetic field at equatorial position or not or in vector form what will i write magnetic field at axial point will be minus 2 times of magnetic field at equatorial point so now everyone the 2b will be the answer choose the incorrect option regarding properties of magnetic field lines is incorrect you see magnetic field lines form closed continuous loops correct yes it is correct the region where magnetic field intensity is less the magnetic field lines are more crowded it seems no more crowded means more magnetic field direction of field lines inside the magnet south pole to north pole correct magnetic lines do not intersect is correct so which one will be wrong second option will be wrong guys clear everyone next bar magnet of magnetic moment 4 ampere meter square is placed along diagonal of a square in excited plane with its center at origin it seems the magnetic field at a distance 1 meter on y axis is so where is the bar magnet placed diagonal of a square in excited plane so square is taken in excited plane let us say something like this it is placed along the diagonal So let us say this is south this is north pole they are asking the magnetic field at distance 1 meter on y axis now as you can clearly observe this is our x axis this is our z axis automatically will this be our y axis or not so how is the bar magnet placed bar magnet is placed in xz plane so what will y axis be y axis is going to be equatorial axis or not yes or no everyone so they are asking us to find out at a point 1 meter on y axis 
So what is this distance given from here to here? From here to center, you can take R value is one meter. So what is magnetic field at equatorial point? How much is it? Side of the square is not given, guys. So assume it is a small bar magnet. So rather than taking south and north, assume it is a small bar magnet. So you can take magnetic dipole moment like this. So what will be magnetic field at equatorial point? Mu naught by four pi m by r q. So mu naught by four pi is ten power minus seven. M value is already given four. Like it one cube or not? It will be four into ten power. Minus seven Tesla. Understood all of you. For a short bar magnet, magnetic field at equatorial position varies inversely proportional to third power of distance. Correct? Is the statement correct? First statement. Yes. The direction of magnetic field at equatorial position of magnet is antiparallel to the magnetic dipole moment. Is that also correct? Yes. So both statements A and B are correct, guys. The desirable properties for making permanent magnet. It seems. What should be the properties to make permanent magnets? We should have high retentivity as well as high coercivity. Yesterday I have told you this point, guys. Again. Now, they are saying coercivity of a permanent magnet is. What is the meaning of coercivity? It is reverse magnetic field or not? So it is equal to H only. So H is given as four into ten power four ampere per meter. This magnet is placed inside a long solenoid, and the current is mag current is passed in the solenoid to demagnetize it. So first of all, because of the magnetic intensity, will there be some magnetic field in vacuum or not? Which is given as mu naught into h. What? Who is mag? Who is demagnetizing this? Now this is going to be cancelled out by this field produced because of in magnetic intensity. Cancelled out by magnetic field inside the solenoid, beta. Magnetic field inside the solenoid. So what is magnetic field inside the solenoid? So B naught should be written as mu naught n i. So B naught value is what? Mu naught into h should be equal to mu naught into small n into i. So we can cancel out mu naught and mu naught. What will h value be? N into i, so i value will be h divided by n. H is how much here? Four into ten power four. What is n? Forty turns per centimeter is given. So centimeter means one by hundred you will get. So will I get it as four thousand turns or not? So I'll get i value as ten ampere beta. Understood everyone? Is that clear? i hope you understood it yes. because of magnetic intensity we will have some magnetic field they are saying this magnetic field is demagnetized by a solenoid so both the magnetic field should be same which of the following statements are true magnetic field is produced by moving electric charge correct yes static charge will produce electric field moving charge will produce both electric and magnetic field Magnetic poles are only mathematical assumptions having no real existence. We'll talk about it. A bar magnet is equivalent to a long straight current carrying wire. Is that correct, guys? No. A bar magnet is equivalent to a current carrying loop, guys. Not a wire. Okay. So obviously D is gone. D should not be there. So A should be there. D should not be there. A north pole is equivalent to clockwise current. The south pole is equivalent to an anti-clockwise. Is it correct? No. South pole is clockwise current. North pole is anti-clockwise current, guys. This is wrong. What would be correct? A and B will be correct statements. Clear, all of you? Understood or not? Wire magnet is equivalent to a current carrying loop. North pole will be anti-clockwise current. South pole will be clockwise current. Okay. A graph between acceptability for a paramagnetic substance. What is it? Is it rectangular hyperbola or not? Because acceptability for paramagnetic substances. What graph will it follow, beta? 
it is inversely proportional to temperature so why inversely proportional to x will follow rectangular hyperbola clear everyone next a certain place on earth true value of dip is given true value is given as 60 degrees if the dip circle is oriented at an angle 45 degrees so what is the angle between magnetic meridian and the plane 45 degrees in the apparent dip shown here again same logic guys so what we can apply let us say phi1 is the apparent dip in that plane twice we have got this question before guys what we can write here tan phi1 value will be equal to bv divided by bh cos of angle between magnetic meridian and that plane which i am taking as theta to which i can write it as tan phi divided by cos theta what is phi here 60 cos 45 tan 60 is root 3 cos 45 is 1 by root 2 you will get tan phi1 value as root 6 implies phi1 value will be tan inverse of root 6 clear everyone understood all of you same question we have done before also yes or no yes in bar magnet when placed in a magnetic field produces 10 oscillations again magnet is now divided into three equal parts by cutting it perpendicular to its axis and each are kept in a magnetic field of 4 tesla what would be each part oscillations the frequency they are asking is what is frequency it is 1 by 2 pi root over mb divided by i or not yes or no all of you what is this given as if magnitude is 2 tesla it is executing how many oscillations the actual frequency is given as 10 hertz okay now when it is cut perpendicularly very important thing how many parts three parts or not beta yes or no the magnet is now divided into three equal parts what will happen to time period if it is placed in same magnetic field time period will become t by 3 or not yes or no beta if it is placed in same magnetic field but here is it placed in same magnetic field no right so generally if i say what will be f dash for this f dash value so time period we know whenever it is cut perpendicularly what is time period t by 3 here also t by 3 here also t by 3 time period got reduced by 3 times will frequency become 3 times or not if it is placed in same magnetic field guys so what is situation here we will get it as 3 into 1 by 2 pi root over mb divided by i but do we have same magnetic field here no so that is the reason instead of writing simply mb i will write mb dash so what will i get 3 into 1 by 2 pi what has happened to magnetic field guys initially it was 2 tesla now it became 4 tesla so is it two times the actual magnetic field or not so it will become 3 root 2 times of 1 by 2 pi root over mb by i which is 3 root 2 times of f 30 root 2 will be your answer beta clear everyone did you understand the logic everyone if it is cut perpendicularly time period will get reduced by 3 times frequency will get increased by 3 times if it is placed in same magnetic field but here it is placed in a magnetic field whose strength is double so what will happen to the frequency it becomes Three root times the actual frequency. Clear, everyone? Yes. Sir. Question. Let us see. The magnetic field due to a short bar magnet 
at a distance x from it on the axial line is 0.1 gauss magnetic field due to the same bar magnet at a distance 2x on the equatorial line so what is magnetic field on equatorial line will i get it as mu naught by 4 pi m by distance is given as 2x 2x whole cube can i take will this be 1 by 8 times of mu naught by 4 pi m by x cube what i'll do i'll multiply and divide by 2 am i making any change no so will it be 1 by 16 times of mu naught by 4 pi 2m by x cube what is this mu naught by 4 pi 2m by x cube is it magnetic field at axial point at distance x beta yes how much is it given as 0.1 gauss so what we can write it as it will be 1 by 16 into 0.1 gauss which which will eventually turn out to be 6.25 milli gauss beta clear everyone understood yes. angle of dip at a place is minus 25 always remember angle of dip will be negative again it is a previous year question 2019 you got similar type of question guys angle of dip is positive in northern hemisphere negative in southern hemisphere and uh, 90 degrees at poles guys because it is negative it will be in southern hemisphere clear for a substance magnetic susceptibility is negative again which type of substance Diamagnetic. diamagnetic or so will it change with temperature beta no it will again be minus 0.0021 only clear yes in this case you see what will be the resultant dipole moment directed from south to north directed from south to north so are they in such a way that right heads are tails are meeting at same point or not so in this case the internal angle only should consider resultant dipole moment will be under root of m square plus m square plus 2 into m into m into cos of angle between them is 60 degrees cos 60 you know it is how much beta 1 by 2 and 2 will get cancelled out so i'll get it as m square plus m square plus m square which is 3 m square root 3m should be our resultant dipole moment clear all of you yes sir i think these were the questions from magnetism and matter right some i think i have to just cross check it i think one question i have left it out and two more questions we have to see guys those questions i'll be discussing in tomorrow's class okay and i'll share the test paper uh, by whatever time it is possible i'll share it by today i'll keep it active till tomorrow's class guys and if possible we will have the class in the afternoon if not we will have the class in the evening itself is that clear so it will be active afternoon ha huh? test will be, be active. active yeah in the afternoon also it will be active yeah. right so you, i think uh, this question one question was left out guys if you look at it area of hysteresis loop is basically b versus h okay so when 5 kg material is magnetized by an alternating field of 50 hertz energy lost in 1 hour will be how much they are saying hmm so here frequency is given to us basically uh 5 kg material is given density is given can i find volume beta here so what is volume volume will give us what here uh, mass by density yes or no mass is 5 kg so i can write it as 8 into 10 power gram per centimeter cube is there 8 into 10 cube kg per meter cube can i write or not yes or no beta so we got the volume what is hysteresis loop going to give us basically it will give us energy loss per unit volume okay so here it means for one volume for one you can write 
for one meter cube, energy loss is how much? Two hundred joules, right? And they are saying for this much volume, five by eight into ten cube meter cube, what is the energy lost? So what will x value be? Let us say again x value. If I do criss cross, we'll get it as two hundred into five by eight into ten cube. Okay. So what will I get? This two hundred ones, two hundred fives. Five and five will get cancelled out. So x value you will get it as one by eight joules. But this will be in one second, guys. They are asking in how much time? In one hour they are asking. So in one hour what will I get? In one hour how much time we have? Thirty six hundred seconds or not? Yes or no, beta? This is thirty six hundred. <laughs> Where are these coming? So it will be thirty six hundred divided by eight. How much will this be, Jesse? I'm getting four hundred something. Four fifty you are getting. Did we do any mistake? Just check. Area of hysteresis loop of material is equivalent to two hundred joules. Joules. Five kg material is magnetized by an alternating field of fifty hertz. Okay, so there is a. This will play a key role, guys. Fifty hertz is going to play a key role. What is the meaning of fifty hertz here? Means it is getting magnetized one by fifty times only, or not? Fifty hertz means in one second it is getting magnetized fifty times, right? So, so what we can write that is for one frequency again. So what is an area of hysteresis loop giving us? Energy loss per unit volume per unit time. So two hundred joules was for one meter cube. So for this much volume, I found out what is this total value, guys? This is the energy loss per unit volume per unit time. I want to find for one hour, so I multiplied it by thirty six hundred seconds. So I got four fifty joules. But I should also take into account fifty hertz, guys. Fifty times for one oscillation we have done. So if I take fifty, what will I get? Forty five five so five five twenty five two two twenty five double zero joules you will get, which is twenty two point five kilo joules. But this is how you will solve that question. This series loop will give us energy lost per unit volume per unit time. So first, what I have done for one meter cube, it is given as two hundred joules. For this much volume, how much joules of energy is lost? This is per unit time. Then I found it for one hour. Then I applied it for fifty oscillations, guys. So you'll get total energy lost as twenty-five kilojoule. Clear? I think two more questions were there, which I will cross-check. I have to cross-check those questions, I guess. Primary origin of magnetism. I'm assuming that to be uh, atomic current and intrinsic spin of electron, guys. And this, these two questions, I will cross-check it once. Okay. Clear all of you? Is that clear, sir? Yes, sir. Sir, could you give an idea on what is? I mean, um, in the globe we talk about equators, latitudes, longitudes. Could you just show that? I mean, if possible. At latitude, you will have some angle. Equator means you can take horizontal line. So angles will be zero degrees. Suppose you take Tropic of Cancer, it will be above. Tropic of Capricorn will be below. so the angle made by any point on the earth with the center will be called as latitude angle so equator latitude angle will be zero it post latitude angle will be 90 at any arbitrary point it will be some lambda or theta as as you want to take clear so the angle made by any point on the earth with the center with the center is latitude angle yes okay right any doubt guys till now till this chapter we have covered almost 14 to 15 questions in physics guys which will account to 56 to 60 marks so in around i think 15 classes that i have taken 
we have covered almost 60 questions 60 marks okay so each day one one question has with that promise only i'm moving ahead guys so we have covered almost 60 marks so we will do the same in the upcoming sessions also and whatever questions we are doing again in order to solve a moderate need paper easy to moderate need paper they will be very much sufficient guys okay so we'll be meeting tomorrow i'll share the paper in some time probably by as i have shared last time guys i'm going to share it in the same manner we'll meet in tomorrow session till then take care everyone good night all of you thank you all bye bye thank you sir thank you guys